that right here? I mean, you have an incredible basketball resume, and there's one thing missing from it, and that's being a national championship. How much would it mean for you to get two more victories and win your first national title? It would mean a lot, and I say this over and over, not only to me, but to our team and our program, the city of South Bend, who's been supporting me my whole life, um, university, Coach McGraw, it just mean a lot um, to so many things so much bigger than myself, and the opportunity um, is here now, and like I said, and I'll keep saying it, we're going to leave it all on the court, and we're going to try our best to, to get to that position where we can fight for a national championship. Uh, Ted Lewis from the Baton Rouge Advocate. For both players, this is obviously the fourth time you played UConn. You've seen, you know them so well. Have you found it more or less difficult to uh, pay attention in the scouting report and, and focus in on, on, on what you have to do as opposed to a team that maybe you hadn't seen before? You want to take that first one? Sure. Oh, go ahead, okay, Matt. I don't, I don't know if there's that much change. I think there's a few little things here and there. Um, but we go back and look at the film. We see what we did wrong. We fix it, and we, we adjust from there. And I mean, they, they couldn't have changed that much in about a week and a half. So uh, we just try to go out there and play hard and play with intensity. I think it makes it, um, I think we pay attention more now than ever. I think you're at a, the point of the season where every detail matters even even more. And, you know, we know so much about them and likewise with them for us, but we just have to make sure we try to come out and still execute our scout defense and our keys to the game. Question right here in the front row. Uh, Rich Elliott from the Connecticut Post. You just talk about the, the level of confidence that you guys have playing against UConn, especially, you know, you won seven out of eight, four straight. Kayla first. Um, you know, UConn's a great team. I think that we just go out there, we have confidence in ourselves. Um, I don't think the other three games really matter. This one, this 40 minutes matters the most out of any other game this year, um, and that's how we're looking at it. I agree. Question here in the front. <clears throat> Jim Fuller, New Haven Register. Skyler, you and Kelly go back to senior all-star games, USA basketball. Can you kind of talk about the last four years, the on-court battles, maybe the how ferocious they've been and the respect both ways that you have, you and Kelly may have for each other? Yeah, she's, a, she's a good player and she's one of the hardest workers I've ever played with and she's somebody that'll never stop. She's like the Energizer Bunny and I think that she's um, fun to play with because you love when teammates uh, go out and just uh, play as hard as they can every, every possession. That was my experience with her. Any more questions for student athletes right here in the front? I want to get a sense, excuse me, Gary Esser from the Baton Rouge Advocate. I want to get a sense for the, the winning attitude, the, the mantra that you carry along with the team. Where did that start for you? How long ago and, and, and what's helped it progress to where it's at now? Well, when I was at a very young age, my dad, Ty, he was super uh, aggressive with me. He was w in sports and he kind of, you know, my mom used to, hey, how rough were you? He used to play with me and what have you. But... Uh, he was very competitive, and then my mom, she never played basketball. She was a, a cheerleader gymnast, but if we played card games, if we played Monopoly, if we played anything, we weren't stopping until she won. And she always encouraged us to just try our best, and um, you, you don't have to be the best, but you have to be your best. And she was so competitive in everything she did, so kind of both of my parents. Question in the back. Uh, Richard Deitch, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Skyler, who's the uh, most well-known person to reach out to you this week to wish you luck? Well, I had talked to Lisa uh, Leslie. I talked to Nancy Lieberman. Um, and on Twitter, uh, Trey Songs told me good luck. I thought that was pretty neat. <laughs> For those that don't know who Trey Songs is, he's a, a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Question in the back here. Skylar, Jeff Jacobs, Hartford Current. Uh, half the state of Connecticut is kind of debating how deep you are in UConn's head right now after all that's happened. Is that something that, that you'd like to plant a seed of doubt in the opponent, or is it something that you, that you don't even care about? Yeah, I don't think it matters. Not to me. I think that right now, um, I don't even think the past three games matter. I, I, I don't know if the tables have turned, maybe, because they're a team when you play against them. Um, they can get in your head because when you think about Connecticut basketball, you think of all the championships, all the All-Americans and what have you. And I think now we've overcome that intimidation factor that they have. I don't know how you feel, K-Matt. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, 
I think that we have a lot of confidence in one another and just a belief that we can win. And it's not just with UConn. It's been every game this year. Um, and we've just taken that momentum and, and just kept playing hard. John Altavilla from the Hartford Current. Um, we, everybody talks about how this game might be different, but I was just wondering if Kayla and Skylar, you could talk about how maybe the last three were similar. Did they play out in a similar way? Were the matchups the same? Or is there a lot of difference between the, and how the first three games were played? And secondly, just as Jeff was saying, UConn's only lost 11 games in five years and seven of them to Notre Dame. Um, is that incredible to you guys after what UConn has accomplished? What was the first question? I'm sorry, it was like two long questions. <laughs> Skylar, how similar were the first three games? Okay, gotcha. Um, well, I think all three of the first three games were decided within the last couple minutes, and I think both teams had an opportunity to win the game. Um, I was proud how the, how my team just made big plays towards the end. Um, if you remember in stores with Area Breaker with the block, and um, she got the final rebound to finish the game, and then. In, uh, South Bend, the three overtimes, just making plays, K-Mac with the three, and uh, to put us into overtime, and just the countless amount of plays made in the three overtimes. And then finally in the Big East tournament, the last defensive play that our team had, and the presence of mind to sprint down the court after we got the steal, make the layup, and then sprint back down to match up. And I think the game was decided um, within the last couple minutes and just our ability to make plays. Question right here in the front. No, so. Corello, South Bend Tribune. <laughs> Has it been total uh, total business for you, or have you had a chance to soak up a little of the culture? And, and if you have, why is it important to get some little breaks in, uh, from the grind? We talk about that all the time. This, this is a business trip for us as far as basketball goes, but we want to enjoy this experience. This is so much fun being a part of this team. We're in such a blessed position to have the opportunity to play for another national championship. and. Um, this is an exciting time for me. I'm a senior, and I keep saying I want to soak it all in. And I know the team went to Bourbon Street yeah, last night cool. and got to see a little bit. Yeah. And I was saying how I, we ate the crawfish. Yeah, was, I couldn't do it. It was like looking <laughs> back at us and <laughs> had eyes in it still. I mean, the food is great. The people have been great. And it's just been a fun experience so far. Mm -hmm. Question right here in the corner. Skylar, when you talk about that intimidation with UConn, what did it take for you guys to get over that and put together this run you're on right now? Well, when you're playing against them, you can't just focus on them and uh, the front of the jersey. You have to really focus on what you want to do and, and executing your game plan. And I think we've been the aggressors um, for the most part on the last couple of times we played them. And I think that helps us when we're just worried about us, what we're going to do and what we need to do to win the game. Time for one more here. Scott, two years ago, you guys were in this position there and having lost three times to them in the regular season and then beat them in the Final Four. What was the mentality for you guys? I mean, was it, okay, we know we can still beat this team and they're sort of in that position now where they've lost you three times this year and now they're trying to knock you off for the first time? Well, for us, we just felt like we had nothing to lose. So I think that was our mindset that we played. We were the underdogs and we had nothing to lose. When we come into this game, I don't feel like we're the underdogs. I still feel like Connecticut is America's team and they're going to cheer for them whether we beat them 20 times in a row. So I think we approach this game with the mindset that um, we, can, we can beat them because we have before. At the same time, they're a great team. And we didn't win by 20. You know, Like I said, the game was decided within the last couple of minutes. So if we're able to make some runs of our own, sustain their runs, make big plays and believe in ourselves, fight through some adversity, make some big plays at the end of the game, you know, we'll be fine. Thank you, ladies. They'll be available in the locker room until 3.20. <coughs> We'll take some questions for Coach McGraw. We'll start right back here. Um, Muffet Schuyler said their attention level's been good. How would you grade it over the last two or three days? I think it's been really focused. Uh, I think there's a lot of intensity. I think there's a lot of awareness of um, the scouting report and what we're trying to do. Right here in front. Coach Schuyler came to you as a great high school player, but she didn't she wasn't a great player, at least to the level she is now, first day on campus. How did she become the player that she is now? She is somebody that really is a student of the game. She loves to watch film. Uh, so we, we watch a lot of film. We talk a lot. Um, you know, we 
draw, draw stuff up on the board together, just kind of talk about ideas and different things and, and experiences. And, uh, you know, I, I like to watch the game from the point guard perspective, so I stand at half court so I can be in her ear, I think, the entire practice. And, you know, what are you seeing and what do you think and what could you have done differently here? So I think a lot of back and forth conversation about things. And um, here's some good things that you did. Here's some things you need to work on. And just, um, you know, also having Neil Ivey on the sideline as a former point guard going through the same thing. I think between the two of us, we've, uh, we've done a lot with her. We have a question in the way back in the purple. Coach, over here on your left side. Uh, Paul Boron from Cox Sports TV here in New Orleans. I know you've answered various versions of this question over the course of the year, but here you are in the Final Four with three Big East teams here. Talk about the pride of the conference and then obviously the mixed emotions of this is it. Well, we certainly think the Big East is the best conference in women's basketball, and I think we've proven that this year. Um, to have two number one seeds and then Louisville join us in the Final Four, I think, is an amazing accomplishment for a league. And, and it's, uh, it's great that we're doing it on the last year together. I think it's kind of a fitting ending for us to go out in a big way, and uh, we're really proud of that. I think the Big East has elevated our team and our program since we joined the conference. We've, uh, we've really become one of the nation's best teams, and so it's, um, it's a little sad to see its demise, but uh, you know we're looking forward to big things for us too. Muffet, why have um, why have you and Gino stayed civil when uh, other coaches in this situation may not be so? Just because of how the rivalry has been, how heated the games have been. Um, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there seems to be civility and like between the two of you. Is th is that correct? And if so, why? Well, I think I, I don't really read anything that he says. I think that helps. Um, I try to stay away from anything um, that, that's controversial. He would love to to uh, to try to get some things going, I think, but um, it's it's really not in my nature to, to go back and forth like that. So I think we do remain civil. I think um, having Philly as a common denominator, I think we both understand each other. Question in the back. Muffet. Uh, <coughs> How much has the dynamic uh, for UConn changed in the last few weeks with them playing Mariah Jefferson as much as she has with speed in the emergence of uh, Brianna Stewart? Yeah, I, I think both of them are playing much better. Um, I think the expectations are, are high coming in for somebody that's ranked number one and number two in the country. You know, everybody expects that you're going to come in and be a great player right away. And, you know, different kids respond to that differently. It takes some of them longer. You know, we were fortunate with Jewel Lloyd that she was able to come in and really, really make that statement. Um, and join the starting lineup immediately as, as one of our best players. So, you know, I, I think they've come a long, they've come a long way, and uh, they're playing really great basketball right now. I think Stewart to be most outstanding player of the regional tournament. That's that's quite an accomplishment for a freshman. Um, so I think they're definitely playing better now and, and playing probably like everyone expected them to at the beginning of the year. Question right here, in the blue. Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Would you speak to Louisville and, and what qualities they have that allowed them to get this far? I think um, confidence would be the key word for them to go into Baylor's um, that game and, and just shoot the ball as well as they did. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Shoni Schimmel is a very confident young lady uh, as the leader of that team, and I think they, they have a little bit of a swagger to them. And I think that's something that you need when you're playing against a team of Baylor's caliber. Right here with Doug. Hey, Coach. Two years ago, you guys were in this position UConn was in, having lost to them three times and beat them in the, in the national semifinals. This year's a little different because every game was down to one possession or in triple overtime. Just men mentally, how is it better to have your team able to focus to maybe beat a team a fourth time since all three games were so close? So I think two years ago, the games were a little more distant that, okay, you know, maybe there's a little confidence UConn had that they could still beat you. Yeah, I think we came out of each game with, wow, we, we didn't play well. You know, here's some things we can do well. Here's some things we can do a lot better. Um, so I think we, we had learned a lot from each game uh, because they were so close. So I don't think we, we have that feeling of, um, you know, we've, we've beaten them so easily because certainly we, it wasn't an easy game. So I think it's a, a different mentality than it was two years ago. Question from Michelle. <coughs> Michelle Smith, ESPNW Muffet. Can you just talk about the vibe of this Final Four? Lindsay Gottlieb joked that their game tomorrow night is the undercard because you guys have played so many times in such tough games. But you had good things to say about Cal when you played them at the end of last year. Are you surprised to see them here? What do you think about sort of the vibe of this Final Four grouping? I'm not at all surprised to see Cal here. Last year I thought they were severely underseeded uh, to be in the 8-9 game. Um, we, we just barely beat them at home in a, in a great game. And I told her that next year they'd be a top 10 team for sure. 
and certainly a team that was uh, on the rise, and, and they've really kind of exceeded expectations in just her second year. I think it's exciting for them, first time to be here. Um, I, I, I don't know the vibe. I don't, I don't leave my hotel room much, so I'm not, I don't know what the, the vibe is on the outside, but um, I, I think that the game between us and Connecticut is such a big rivalry game in the country that I'm sure the um, national, uh, e the ESPN, and, and everybody's pretty excited about having that game on TV. Um, and uh, it is a sellout, so I think it'll be a great game. Question right in front. John Altavilla from the Hartford Current. <coughs> Muffy, so you don't read much what Gino says, which is probably a good thing. About a month ago, he was addressing a breakfast, Chamber of Commerce breakfast in the state, and he told the audience that there was no way that Notre Dame was going to beat UConn a fourth time. He pretty much guaranteed that they were going to win the game. Did that get back to you? No, um, the guarantee for the Big East Championship did. And so um, that was a great motivational speech that I'd never have to give uh, to our team. So I, I think that was, um, that was something that we did see. Anything else for Coach McGrawley here, Richard? Yeah, Muffet, at the beginning of the year, you, um, you, you talked that you liked this team, but you did say you didn't expect, I, I shouldn't put words in your mouth, but I wonder if where they are has turned out to be a surprise based on where you thought they would be at the beginning of the year. <coughs> you know, I thought after the Baylor game, I changed my whole thinking on this team. Uh, I came out of that game, uh, we lost the game. It was relatively close, you know, and, and I thought we played really well, did some really good things. And so I, I gained a lot of confidence coming out of that loss. And I really looked at the team a lot differently and um, where we could be. We went from there to play um, Texas A&M in a tournament in Vegas, and I thought they were a great team. And we managed to beat them. And then uh, coming into early January and beating Connecticut in the store's first game. And I think from that moment on, you know, we felt totally different. Like, we're, we got here a lot earlier than we thought we would. Um, and, and so I think our expectation changed, I think, in that time. A question right in here. Kurt Rallo, South Bend Tribune. What is it you saw in this team that made you feel like that? Was it something they were doing on defense or just a, a mindset? I think it was a little bit of both. I think the mindset was there, the confidence. Uh, I think that's what we saw, um, that we went in, we executed what we needed to, we made shots when we needed to. And I think um, certainly Jewel Lloyd had a lot to do with that. I think early on, Kayla McBride, you, you knew Skyler was going to be there. Um, you expected big things from... Uh, from her, but to have the rest of the team step up, I think that was the big difference. Anything else for Coach? Okay, thank you. Thank you.